regulator is monitoring the latest developments but warns it is still unclear since nobody knows how long the measures will last. Take a look at this detailed report filed by Brenda Keribu. I guess the catchword going forward or the watchword going forward is one of uncertainties, uncertainties, uncertainties. Over the last year, COVID-19 has had a negative impact on the economy, with most people hoping to see a rebound this year. But though the year was off to a good start, optimism is quickly being replaced with uncertainty. Certainty is really the byword. President Uhuru Kenyatta restricted travel in the capital Nairobi and four surrounding counties on Friday as COVID-19 infections hit record levels. He also suspended in-person learning and shut down bars in the zoned area. The president acknowledged the measures will have a negative impact on the economy. It has a selective impact in terms of the region and in terms of the sectors. Still, there is, it is important to note uh, that uh, an important un unknown in this is how long it will last. It is a wait-and-see approach, but the regulator says it stands ready to use all its available tools, including an economic stimulus program to cushion businesses and vulnerable citizens. If things uh, turn out that um, additional measures are needed because things have really worsened, then obviously the MPC and other authorities or other or the other policymakers stand ready. Kenya is set to receive $314 million next week from the International Monetary Fund to support countries' response to the pandemic. It is part of a $2.4 billion facility set to be approved by the fund on April 2nd. It intends to anchor uh, debt vulnerabilities and reduce them. Central Bank of Kenya has maintained a stronger outlook despite the latest containment measures. Quite contrary to global rating agencies, Fitch, for instance, has given Kenya a negative outlook due to underlying weaknesses of public finances and the uncertain pace of planned fiscal consolidation. SNP Global Ratings lowered Kenya's sovereign credit rating outlook to B from B, citing a sharp slowdown in the goods and services produced in the country due to the pandemic. Brenda Kirubu, KTN News. Well, it seems tough times lie ahead, allow us to interrogate this particular issue with the latest move on restrictions which have sparked fears around a new round of layoffs and job cuts um, triggering long defaults and a cash crunch in an economy that is struggling to recover uh, due to the corona-induced slump. Elisha Viambo joining us at our Sinti Center studios. Allow me to start with you. What's your take on this? Because looking at the papers today, a couple of industry players mentioned that 80% of active tourist facility investors are contemplating sending their employees home when they had just been recalled months ago. A grim reality of the state of affairs in the country. Perhaps uh, BBI might not be a priority right now. What, what's your take on this? I think the economy has slumped on recession. I think the president means well to the extent that he doesn't want many people to die. But I, I, I think that the advisors, the technical team that advised the president on closing the economy, should have, should have assisted him in tampering with measures that contain the virus. I'm aware that majority of hoteliers in Nairobi, majority of hoteliers in Akuru, majority of hoteliers in Kiambu and Mombasa have been dismissed from the employment. My heart goes out to those many Kenyans who are suffering because of the decision that was taken by the technical team that advised the president to close uh, those counties. But having said that, Yesterday, I traveled from Kisumu to Nairobi. The only roadblock is in Akuru. There's no roadblock between Akuru to Nairobi. What does that mean? It means some of these measures, the efficacy are questionable. I mean, we should revert back to what was done initially when, when the economy was locked. We had, uh, we had carry reducing the tax on income. That's what the president needs to do. Number two, 
He needs to ensure that the vulnerable in, in, in the constituencies and in the slums in Nairobi are given some money to help them have a livelihood. We are killing Kenyans. The Kenyans uh, have been sacked. There are many Kenyans who are working in Dubai. There are many Kenyans who are working in Qatar. They have been sacked. They are back home. And even here back at home, there's nothing for them to write home about. We need to review this strategy. And I'm asking the president to rethink uh, a better strategy. We, were, we are going on Easter. Many people had booked hotels in Mombasa. Many people had booked hotels in Kisumu. Many people had booked areas to take their families. This was going to help the economy, economy gain its robustness. But the fact that we have closed this, it means uh, the economy will go on total recession. If you ask me what we need to do, is to enhance the speed at which we are vaccinating Kenyans. And ensure anybody living in Nairobi to Mombasa is vaccinated on spot. Anybody living in Nairobi to Kisumu, to Nakuru, is vaccinated at the boundary. And the county medical staff should increase the, the speed of vaccination. For me, this is what will help. Okay, that's interesting. And sure that Bearing in mind, police, Elisha... Uh, let me bring yeah. this in, because I asked uh, Bunyasi Sakwa earlier on, the target is 30% of the population, even if we're thinking of vaccination, uh, that's the target by 2022. It won't be every Kenyan who will get the vaccination, unfortunately, uh, going by those statistics. What's your take on this briefly before I engage our other panelists? Sorry, uh, just say my well, light has gone out about an hour. I hope you can still see me. Uh, the, uh, normally, these targets are aimed to achieve what they call herd immunity, immunity of the majority of the herd, majority of the population, and usually about 60% uh, 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 immunization is what is considered about adequate to protect the rest of the population. Maybe 30%, uh, rather 30% would seem on that basis to be only about half of what the target should be. Uh, but the, the realities might be that they can't get the vaccines on time. Uh, it, money cannot be the excuse. We can divert money, uh, make painful decisions, divert money from what we are going to do with it that's slightly longer term and take it to COVID. Because that, without it, we may not have a republic right. uh, to, to protect. And, and I just want to add something that we, we have not touched, but it's related. You know, we talked about issues of uh, government lacking resources about the BBI and so on. Part of it's because of the debt public debt that it has got. But remember, household debt is now also very high. We got the data last weekend saying that Kenyans are borrowing on a daily basis about, uh, I think it was 1.2 billion, or was it, was it 2.1? I, I mean, my, my numbers may be mixed up. But very large numbers, uh, which indicates that we are going to hobble, that the households are going to be hobbled with debt as the nation is hobbled with debt. It needs a very delicate economic management strategy by the, by, by the mandarins in Treasury and, uh, and, and also parliamentary oversight uh, being they really must, they must be on their toes. Okay, Bunyasi, I was actually referring that question uh, to Mishimo Elisho Diambo, but before I bring him back, since you already answered, talk to us about the option of bringing back the loan restructuring reliefs, because um, uh, according to the CBK governor, um, the Monetary Policy Committee is actually on standby, ready to deal with any adverse effects brought about by um, the tougher restrictions imposed last week Friday. Talk to us about this? First of all, I think the Central Bank has been far too laid back. Uh, since this COVID started, a lot of the uh, predicted uh, impacts and side effects are very much the same as we're experiencing now. Uh, people expect it to be get, it will get much worse. The Central Bank had you know, sat back, it surprises me a bit. I think our Central Bank must act independently of IMF. They will listen to IMF, they will they'll, they'll take policy measures that are consistent with their obligation to IMF, but we cannot be waiting for IMF to take the lead. Our people should understand the economy deeper than IMF does. I was, I was not happy with that. Uh, that's that's uh, you know uh, one side of it. But I think the truth of the matter, though, is that um, uh, a lot of uh, painful measures must be undertaken. The Monetary Policy Committee, uh, which is the, the one that advises the central bank 
uh, central bank uh, governor and the bank itself or whether, whether to ease the money supply in the economy or to tighten the money supply in that economy and that has various implications now yes they have met they have pronounced themselves they are saying essentially what many analysts and many kenyans had said uh, right from the beginning these are tough times and we must get our priorities right yes stabilize the economy then to do what and that i think is important the issues my colleagues have raised about having gone into a lockdown i i, I support the lockdown but having gone into a lockdown without any uh, contingent measures uh, that would uh, uh, ease off non burdens uh, the, the employment market is very fragile and now you're going to send home the few that have got uh, uh, decent jobs and you do nothing about it. And the rest of the people, like in the cities, is like you're really prisoning them in a, in a cell without food and without water. Because they, they depend a lot on these daily earnings and so on. The rural ones might do a little better uh, because they might be able to produce some of their own requirements and so on. I think the government was a bit slow in bringing in those measures. And if you, rem if you followed yesterday's parliamentary debate, uh, it was that government ought to have come out with contingent measures at the time that they announced the lockdown. True. Uh, and now those measures are not coming out. Uh, so we are hoping as parliament that when we do sit, All right. like in the budget committee where I sit, that we'll uh, put more pressure on the executive to come out with, with proposals for recovery, a stimulus that's going to assist households. That's so important. Uh, otherwise, you know, we really are running down the economy very rapidly. Okay, let's bring in uh, Suleiman Bashir. It's been a while since we had your take. Uh, but uh, bearing in mind everything that's ongoing, and I'm sure you're quite active on social media, when Kenyans see that we're set to receive yet another 34 billion shilling loan from the IMF uh, in terms of monetary support uh, in light of the effects of COVID-19, we definitely see the reaction. It's not always smiles, even though this money is meant to do good in the economy. Questions rise around the efficiency in the use of these funds. Talk to us about this. What's your take? Absolutely, Jesse. You see, it is not just about borrowing. It is about what we do with the borrowed amount. It is about the impact that the borrowed amount, um, uh, whether or not it will make that is what will well, that is how it will make sense to Kenyans. The effectiveness of the borrowed sum that is in fact what will steer confidence in the people of Kenya, in as much as the government of the day may opt for borrowing. Jesse, let me just say this. In April last year, the government of the day has come in to question Kenyans through giving them certain uh, recovery measures, certain stimulus package by way of tax reliefs. I think it is December last year that through the Tax Law Amendment Act through Parliament that that has been halted. Right now, when we have our Parliament going on recess, you see, for, all, for proper um, um, tax relief measures to, to kick in, we need to, there is a need for conversation between the executive and parliament. Now that our parliament is proceeding on a recess, that conversation may not be there and that tax relief may not be in the office anytime soon unless maybe parliament is recalled on a very special mission. Just let's, let, let me say this. Our, it is said by record or by report, it is reported that 79% of our SMEs are, local, are, are informal. This means that we need to have a way of alleviating their challenges by coming up with solutions that target them. Being informal means the mamamboga on the streets, how will she really benefit from the tax reliefs? Is it more important that she be given certain grants that will maybe uplift her status? I think for us, it is not just about looking at how other economies have handled their issues, but it's about looking at ours in a very special sense, noting that our SMEs, about 79% about of our SMEs are informal. That means we need to have our own way of tackling this. I think, Jesse, when we look at what the CBK governor has been saying in terms of his uh, arguing that things are not bad as such, it is only 96 hours since the president has come up with these tougher containment, containment measures. Look at the cries of Kenyans. Every single day, a new Kenyan is losing his job. And when he loses his job, let's say that Kenyan in Nairobi, for him to travel to Marsabit or Turkana, he cannot leave this Nairobi because there is a lockdown that has been, there is a containment measure, a special one that has been imposed on Nairobi. Okay. The movement has been seized, seceded. So I think, Jesse, it is high time that the government looks at our economy in a special sense. Let it look at our SMEs in a special sense. Let it see how it can come in to maybe improve 
uh, uh, the station that you have been on the ground. And the only way that we can appreciate the tax reliefs that have actually helped between April last year and December is to us through parliament. And, the, and it is again through parliament that that has been halted. Just among of the beneficiaries of those whose uh, pay has been reduced from 30% to 25%. That 5% that the government has given me as a relief is what I will be taking to the Mamamboga whenever I'm buying something. So that tax relief has helped a lot. I think it is high time for the government not to just come in and impose on very tough measures, but it should be considerate of the plight be facing the people. It should actually evaluate what really needs to be done. Let me just underscore this. The special contain, I mean the stimulus package, the so-called package that the government has actually dangled to Kenyans in April last year, has not been audited. We have not had any audit report. Those sums of money that were targeted at the elders, uh, where is it? Any impact? What has happened about it? Has the amounts that were, I think, 100 million or there about that was meant for the artists, where has it gone to? I think that audit will enable us to appreciate the future. Okay. Even as we appreciate the future. Elisha Odhiambo, the fact of the matter is some counties have actually imposed um, some measures to elevate small-scale businesses placed within the counties, Machako, Sembu, just to name a few. But in light of the latest uh, move that Kenya is set to receive uh, roughly $34.4 billion from the IMF, and along with it, it will come restructuring of the uh, state uh, parastatals. Talk to us about your reaction, uh, bearing in mind what is ongoing in terms of uh, the effects of ravaging COVID-19 pandemic? I think if, if the country receives money, that's fine. But what is important is what are the remedial measures that we put in place to ensure that the money received... Well, we don't seem to be getting you, Elisha Odhiambo, even as we work on that. Um, can you... Okay, let me just repeat the question. Uh, we hope we can hear you this time round. Elisha, kindly continue. I'm saying, uh -huh. I think the government receiving the money is fine. What is important for me is how the money is used. What remedial measures are in place. You know, my heart goes out to the transport sector. It's dying. My heart goes out to the hotel industry. It's dying. My heart goes out to the people running uh, the local entertainment sports. Take, take, for example, where I come from, Sierra County. You know, the, 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 the bus pay a license to the county government. Even when there was a lockdown, the county government did not take cognizance that these bar owners, we, we, should, we should appropriate the money they pay uh, appropriately so that we don't charge them the whole amount for the year. And that goes to all the other businesses that, that go on up to late in the night. So, so we need to tamper with the taxes that we charge them, as, even at the county government level, if we want to help the national government. So what is important is those classical measures that were put in place initially to help the Kenyan who is an employee in government, help the Kenyan employed in private sector, so that their life can go on. If you read the newspapers on Monday, you'll find almost 10 pages auctioneers. Kenyans are being auctioned for the loans they took. What does that tell you? It tells you we are taking care of a disgruntled group a time bomb for the country. We need to deal with it as a country moving forward. Okay, Alicia, even as we respect yeah. that, the bigger question would be how to help, even as we empathize with those who are going through uh, turmoils, because um, we also expect uh, protest uh, sh uh, short march uh, today by the entertainment and hospitality workers who are protesting the recent. Um, uh, uh, lockdown effects, uh, demanding an end to lockdown, 100% compensation for loss of work and suspension of rent and health care fees. This is some of the demands. So how exactly do we help these particular sectors on your take before we listen to uh, Bunyasi's take as well? One, as parliament, we need, we need to have a special sitting to revert back to the old uh, tax measures so that we can reduce VAT 
and even reduce the income tax. Then the central bank, as a regulator, needs to ensure that those with loans, we, we, we can do what is done in uh, first world economies, so that we are given one, one year uh, moratorium, so that they, 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 can, they can pay once the economy is recovering. And ensure that the vulnerable in our society, people living in the slums, we have, a, we have a structure in which to reach out to them to help them. That is what's happening in first world economy. We are in a third world economy, but we can do better than what we have done. Okay, I think the message is definitely yeah. out there. Allow me to bring on board um, uh, Suleiman Bashir right now before we listen to the man who sits at the Economy Committee in Parliament, Bunyasi. Um, so Bashir, what, what needs to be done? How should we refocus, bearing in mind that CBK will be pondering on loan repayment reliefs, uh, bearing in mind how this eventually turns out? Well, what's the area of focus according to you? Just what I'm asking myself is 96 hours down the line, what have we done? What is happening? And I think I can assure you, the biggest victims are the youth and women. The youth are the biggest victims. If you watch or if you follow up um, on social media, on those who are crying majorly, those are the people who are falling between uh, the, between 18-year-olds and the 40-year-olds. That is now, I think, where we both uh, you and I fall in, and those are the people who are suffering most. Jesse, this is the way forward, in my view. The government of the day needs to roll out mass vac vaccination to allow every single person to be vaccinated to report to work. Once that is done, let the government put in place certain relief measures that are industry specific in the, in the, in the space of entertainment. Let the government think of how to alleviate those in the entertainment industry. Those who are in the sport industry, the same, same way. Those who are in the markets, those who are traders in the Gikomba market and what have you, let the government tackle it in a special way. If that is done, I think that is how we shall move forward. Jesse, also, this is the opportunity that Kenyans last time have shown a, a key sign of solidarity with respect to big telecommunication companies such as Safaricom that have actually given certain relief to Kenyans, certain amounts of money were actually, certain goods or certain services were subsidized at a big uh, margin. I think that is the kind of gesture that we all need to appreciate to improve the lives and save the lives of each other. You see, this is the time that when the government comes in to offer tax relief, that is where, by, where that, that tax relief, especially the pay cut, that will encourage the employers to keep the employees at work. Because you are encouraging as a government, the employers, that as a government, we shall give you these reliefs, kindly be considerate of those who are working for you. Jesse, let me underscore this. What the reason as to why we are here, it is through the Tax Law Amendment Act that has been reversed by Parliament in December last year. The government of the day, these two members of Parliament and their members, these are the people now who should come up with a strategy to have a conversation with the executive by passing key legislatures that will cushion Kenyans at this stage. Okay, let's focus on uh, the man who sits on the economy uh, committee. Bunyasi Sakwa, what's your take on this? Because I mean, COVID seems to be here with us, unfortunately, uh, to stay. So the disruptions, not just in the transport sector, in the education sector as well, this calls for proper planning because our day-to-day -day lives can be disrupted on a day-to-day -day basis just because of the ongoing pandemic. Lives need to continue. As much as we're protecting lives, we definitely need to protect the economy as well. What's your take on this? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Jesse. Uh, first of all, the the actions, the the occurrence of the of, of, of the pandemic, uh, is so, is something that is out there that is happening, irrespective of which administration we have got, which government we have got, is happening. The challenge that we have, and I want to say this, that we, we get away from a blame game of any kind, implied or otherwise. The the, the the challenge we have is how to respond to the COVID-19, to the pandemic. Uh, we have focused a lot on the uh, on, on, on workers, salaried workers, and remember that a tiny minority of our, of our uh, uh, working uh, eligible work workforce that we have got, the, the what we have now is a tiny minority. Now we've been thinking about how to keep them in jobs. Anything helps, but also remember there will be millions of Kenyans outside of that formal workforce that are now unable to cope in the ways they're coping on their own. Uh, this is a huge proportion of, 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 the, of, the, of, of the population. Now, the, the way that a, a government responds is to deal 
with both of these categories. Those who are already been in employment probably have some savings, so they, have, they may, may or may not have savings, have assets they can dispose of, uh, even if it's painful. And there are those that are outside this bracket mm -hmm. who also must be catered for. That delicate management of the economy is what we are demanding of the executive now. That management of the economy is, is why I made a comment that the central bank was a bit slow in coming out with policies that support everybody else out there that make it possible. And the central bank doesn't take out money and give. Central bank eases the conditions under which uh, financial institutions can access money and lend it out. Eases uh, uh, conditions on, on uh, repayment back for those uh, banks that are borrowed. If they extend their terms, they can also extend the terms to the, to the uh, uh, small borrowers. That's what central banks do. From a remote control, they change the policy instruments that make it more attractive for banks to go and intermediate more. Now, I think that, that he must come out, and this, not he, the central bank governor and his team must come out and say they are part of the management of the economy, and they're not going to look at what the president has done, and still come out and say they're going to back him. No, they should be looking forward. They may have approaches that are contrary to what the president wants, and the president has to adjust his part also in order to be able to deal with this. I think that um, uh, our institutions, must stop looking over the, the anti-corruption ones, uh, the central bank I can see, and many, including, uh, 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 let me not mention all of them by name, they should stop looking at what State House does before they act. They should act within the mandates they have got. Now, I agree that, and that's a point you made at the beginning, that in locking down, you make it even more difficult for the few who are working. What about those many who are surviving on their own uh, uh, ways, not earning a salary, but having, having a small business, unable to do that, uh -huh. and unable to do, to apply all the coping measures, including for those who can, retreating to the villages and hoping that there are food stocks there where they can survive, they're not going to pay rent and so on, where that is the case, they can't, they can't move. That's why uh, government should have come out uh, with a quick policy package to say, we're locking down the economy by the interim, this is how we are going to support uh, uh, our population, this segment of our population, the following ways, whatever the ways are. It's not an easy thing. Um, the management of the economy at a time like this needs a careful observation where you intervene, where you don't, how you intervene, and we need the alacrity of uh, a treasury secretary that can do this. We have had some people like that before. Okay. Now, right now, the feeling is that the treasury is not appearing to be adept or adaptive, both of those. Uh, and therefore, there are, there are challenges there. I, we think that they should uh, uh, be very much on their feet. And the over, oversight institutions can critique, they must propose also, and so on, including civil society. Um, and nobody, everybody who does uh, recommend must know them no monopoly uh, of wisdom uh, at a time like this. It's a question of sometimes informed trial and error. Informed, I say, because you try, it doesn't work, you try something else, you must be ready to measure the, the, the outcomes and so on. That's what is not coming across as being a strong part of the current, uh, uh, say, Treasury administration and the current administration. That must come out more clearly. Okay, definitely needs to come out more clearly. Informed decisions in terms of alleviating um, the, uh, the issues facing the common Monanchi right now, bearing in mind that loans worth 28.4 billion shillings right now that were restructured have actually gone bad. So more might be listed on the Credit Reference Bureau's quite unfortunate news. So gentlemen, 30 seconds each as we conclude. I'll start with you, Suleiman Bashir, before I cross over to the Waishimiwas. Your final take on this matter as we put it to rest. Hopefully uh, there will be measures instigated to an evade the suffering of the common monanchi. 30 seconds briefly. Jesse, it is common knowledge that things are a bit bad in our country. Even as we focus on what is happening as a country, even as we call on the government to intervene and do something about this, I think each and every person amongst us, we have a critical role to play in protecting each other's lives. Let us see how we can support each other. Let us see how we can appreciate those who are, who are doing worse. So let us be each other's keepers at this stage. And that is how I think we can move forward as a country in as much as we are calling on the government of the day to step in. Let each and every person who can do something, do something. That is how we shall forge forward. Okay, Elisha Diambo, your final take briefly. My final take is uh, the government has structures. We have village elders, we have health workers in the village. 
Let us use these structures to identify the vulnerable in the villages and send them help directly to their numbers. Let us use the sub-county commissioners to reach out to the vulnerable in our communities. And I want to tell Kenyans, we'll be better tomorrow. Let us take care of ourselves in this COVID period. Okay, quite so. Bunyasi Sakwa, your final take bearing in mind, we expect a hefty sum from the IMF just this week. Uh, the, uh, uh, before I, I say that, just a sentence, uh, I think we must all uh, uh, wish uh, Mama Sarah uh, 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 rest in eternal peace. She's been a huge ambassador of Kenya. She's a very stoic uh, woman, uh, and uh, I think she's been a great citizen. But back to the, uh, what we are faced with, uh, I think that uh, the uh, government must be more bold in what they are going to do. Uh, and the boldness might include, as I said, even cessation of expenditure on certain projects they, that they might be undertaking or planning to undertake uh, and to focus almost singularly